God bless you. This is Prophet Lovi Elias Houston. It is your time, March 31st at the Smart Financial Center in Sugarland. It's going to be a night of the prophetic deliverance, healing, and it's going to be a restoration season for you. Make sure you mark it down. Make sure you're there March 31st at the Smart Financial Center in Sugarland. God bless you. Good morning, Revelation Church. Come on, raise to your feet, raise to your feet. The Lord is looking for some people to praise Him in spirit and in truth. So if that's you, make some noise. Joy is here this morning. Joy is here this morning. And you know, joy is about what you know. So I want you to know that you are a promise. That God has made a way for you even when you feel like you're stuck. That He can deliver you, He can heal you today. So let's raise this. Let's go. Joy is here. Clap your hand. Hey, even though it's cold, listen. We will not be shaken. We will not be moved. For the Lord is beside us. With Him we cannot lose. The shadow surrounds us, and we will fear no evil. We trust in the Lord with our hearts, and in our joy we will dwell forever.
the joy. I know joy is coming. sanctuary and the overflow and the overflows God is doing something so incredible in Revelation Church we ain't even got room for all this so we just we praise God with you today and we know you're gonna get what you came for hallelujah 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 come on let's keep our praise up hallelujah. let's keep our worship up 
for he is worthy, worthy, worthy of the praise, glory, and honor. I said he is worthy because he is able. Oh, hallelujah. The God we read in the text in the scriptures is the same God today. If you read that he was a God of miracles in the days of Elijah, let me tell you, he's still a God of miracles today. So it doesn't matter what you came with today. If you came with a prayer, if you came needing a miracle, if you came just needing a touch of his presence because you've been feeling dry or depressed, let me tell you, God is in this place and he wants to touch you. He wants to bless you. He wants to give you a miracle today. We just praise you, Jesus. We worship you because you're a good, good father. You're a good, good savior. You're a good, amazing king. You're merciful and beautiful and glorious and mighty. God, we worship you with the revelation of who you are. We give it all to you right now, Jesus. We give it all to you, Lord. Oh, we are here for you, Lord. We are here because of you. We are here by you, Lord. We acknowledge that it is only by the grace of God that we have come this far. And Lord, we are here because we need a touch of your presence. We need a move of your spirit. We acknowledge this nation needs a move of the presence of God, Lord. Where would we be without you, Lord? Where would this world go without you, Lord? But we know, we know that if your people seek your face, if your people who are gathered right here by your name, Lord, we know that you are healing our land, you are healing our country. That is why we say, Lord, we need a move. We need the move of your presence, Lord. It is our heart's cry today that you move in this place, you move in our lives, you move in our families, you move in our communities, that you move in our nation. Lord, we give you freedom to just move, to just do what you want. We are surrendered at your feet, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Cause mountains are still being moved. And strongholds are still being loosed. God, we believe it. And yes, we can see it. That wonders are still what you do. And bodies are still being raised. Giants are still being slain. God, we believe it. Yes, we can see it. That wonders are still what you do. We are here.
Cause we know that miracles happen when you move Healing is coming in this room Miracles happen when you move Heaven is coming, all we need is your move Miracles happen
Well, the atmosphere is changing now. Mm-hmm. That the spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around. Well, the spirit of
Jesus. Jesus, you know, we were talking about being close to God. This was a while ago, and a sister of mine in this church was talking about how, you know, God is omnipresent. God is omnipresent, and he dwells within us. So how, how, how much closer can we be? And suddenly I saw a house. And I said, I'm not an expert, but I'm seeing this house. And it's like, if you're living in God's house and he's put food in the fridge for you and he gave you a warm bed to sleep in, but he lives in the upstairs bedroom and you never go knock on it. And he doesn't mind. He'll let you go in and out, use the pool in the back, use the tennis court, because he wants you to have your free will. But he would love it the most if you would come knocking. He would love it if you came knocking. If there's any of you out there that feel like you haven't knocked in a while, maybe you're just going through the motions of coming to church, but you're not really saying, sitting up against the door, saying, Jesus, I want to spend time with you. I want to know you better, Jesus. Knock, 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 knock. And he will answer. He will always answer. He just wants you to choose to knock. He wants you to choose to knock. Father, we, we pray to be closer to you. We pray to know your mind. We pray to know your will. We want to know what you like, what you dislike. We want to know what you want to pull out of us. Lord, we want to become more and more and more like you. As we take on the mannerisms of a friend we are close to, may we take on you in the same way so that those who are around us are blessed by your presence coming through us. We know that being close to you is not just a benefit to us. It is a benefit for those around us. So Father, we come to you right now and we knock on the door. We knock on this door. I just wanna get close 
obligation I just want to get I breathe you in I just want to get One more time we knock and I just want to get
you up above everything and everyone we exalt you we magnify you Lord to be an expression of you is an honor to be an expression of you is an honor
the name of Jesus, we thank you. We lift up your name. You're worthy of all glory and honor. Father, we ask you that through your mercy, by reason of the blood of your son, Jesus Christ, cleanse us and forgive us of all our sins. As we stand before you, oh Lord, accept us today. Accept us not because of anything we have done, but because of your son, Jesus. May we receive every good gift that you have ordained for us today. Father, lift your name amongst us. Reveal yourself to us in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout amen. amen. Somebody shout amen. amen. Clap your hands to the Lord. Are you here? Yes. Are you sure you're here? Yes. Touch your neighbor, say neighbor. It is an opportune time for you. I can't hear you say neighbor. It's an opportune time for you. Find another neighbor, say neighbor. It's an opportune time for you. Find that neighbor that doesn't like to talk and tell them neighbor. You better open your mouth. It's an opportune time for you. Find that neighbor that doesn't look at anybody. Look at them. And say, neighbor, it's an opportune time for you. You better look at me. Your miracle is on my face. Listen to me, neighbor. It's an opportune time for you. In Jesus' name, clap your hands to the Lord. Now, hear, hear me by the Spirit of God. When the Bible says it's your opportune time, there's a difference between opportunity and opportune time. When the Lord Jesus walked on the earth, the Bible says it like this. He said it like this. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Now, when people hear that, they think, you know, guys... Let us make sure we know what words mean. Yes. Repent is not connected to what you did. Yes. Repent simply means change your mind concerning what you did. Amen. That's what repenting means. Amen. So when people say repent and receive Jesus, they think it means ask for forgiveness. No, repenting is not just you're sorry about what you did. But you're changing your mind concerning what you did. Amen. An example is, Sin is bad. Amen? Amen. Sin brings death. Amen? Amen? That doesn't mean you won't make a mistake. You'll miss it sometimes. Yeah. But you should hate sin. Amen. So your mind concerning sin has changed. Amen. So even if you stumble on it, you're like, man, Father, cleanse me. I don't like this thing. Amen. But if you are not repented, you do it. You'll be like, ah, it's okay. God understands. Ah, tomorrow you do it again. Next week you do it again. And then you may die and end up in hell. Repentance means I not only hate the thing, I have changed my mind completely concerning it. So Jesus was speaking to the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, you know, and he would tell them, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. He wasn't speaking to unbelievers, you know that, right? You know, some of you assume that these people are unbelievers. No, they were not. Jesus sat in their synagogues. But what they were missing was an opportune time. That's why in John he says, He came unto his own, and his own what? Received him not. They missed their opportune time. Not their opportunity, but their opportune time. Good. When the Bible says it like this, it says, And I will restore unto you the years that the cankerworm, the caterpillar ate. He doesn't say, I will restore unto you what they ate. He says, I will give you the opportune time they took from you. Amen. I will restore the time. Yes. The years. Yes. <laughs> Maybe this is too deep for some of you. I will restore to you the years. Meaning your, opportun your opportunity is one time. 
opportune time is an accumulation of years that can be received in us. So what takes 10 years? If it is your opportune time, 10 years can be pushed. This is why the Bible says it like this. It says it like this. It says, a day is like a thousand years unto God and a thousand years is like a day. Because in your, life, in your lifetime, a thousand years in this flesh, we won't see it. But a day with God is like what? A thousand years. So your opportune time with God. Oh, Hallelujah. Some people didn't get it. This is why prophetically, you can receive what your children's children's children will have. Carry it with you and be able to give it to the generations. Lift your right hand and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I will not miss my opportune time. Lift up your voice and begin to declare it and pray. Shandala Bahariya Bakataya. Lift up your voice and pray, 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 pray. In the mighty name of Hallelujah. So when you hear the word of God, it's simply waking you up to your opportune time. As long as you have breath in your lungs, opportunities don't make a life. Opportune time does. Amen. When you walk under an open heaven, Nothing will be withheld from you. This doesn't wait for you to be perfect. It is because you serve a perfect God. This is not because you are good or I'm good. It is because the God we serve is what? From today, when you wake up, when you're in church, when you're at home, always tell yourself, mm -hmm, my opportune time. You look at your neighbor, you say, no, it's my opportune time. Are you sure you can hear me? When you understand spiritual things, things become different. Psalms chapter 46 from verse 10. Psalms 46 from verse number 10. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you sure you're there? Yes. You know, I think I like overflow more. You guys are too. I'm going to permanently move to the other side. They are more vibrant. They are more... I feel, I feel like this side is for distinguished people. You are too honorable, you are too good, your arms crossed. I feel like the fishermen are on the other side. The market, they are ready to receive. Look at these guys on this side. You 
especially when there's noise. Ah, I will prophesy until kingdom comes. You see, there's church here, there's church there. These guys, I don't know. I can even hear the people online. Louder than some of you in here. Somebody shall fire. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're feeling it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me tell you, nothing pleases God than noise. Amen. You see, noise is not chaos. Noise just means uncontrollable life. When you are vibrant, you can't be controlled. And when God sees us, he sees a sign of life. That's why the Bible says, make a what? Joyful. the spirit <laughs> he missed his opportune time <laughs> it's coming Okay, now we are awake. Psalms 46 from verse 10. And now we are alive. Hallelujah. Psalms 46 from verse 10. Let's read it together. One, two, three. Next verse. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Say Let's read it again one more time from 10. 1, 2, 3. Be still and know that I am God. Uh -huh. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Say I think you can read it with your chest. 1, 2, 3. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may sit in heavenly places. 
Ela mashakata baya. Eria matala bahia. Somebody shout glory. <laughs> Bishop, I love you, sir. Yes, please. Anytime. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now hear me by the Spirit of God. Today I want to preach quickly so that we can get into anointing. Because Thursday I misbehaved and I over prophesied. I thought you see you don't like you should have congratulated me. Amen. Ah, Thursday. <laughs> Thursday is what we call prophetic manifestation. Ah. <laughs> It was deep. So now I know every time I want to prophesy like crazy, I start from the overflow. You see, they are not distinguished. Look how quickly you, you guys crossed, you know, high class people. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> now hear me by the Spirit of God. Hear me by the Spirit of God. The Lord of hosts is with us. Let's start from 10, please. It says this, be still and know that I am God. Now, I taught this uh, um, to a few of, of, uh, of, the, of the sons and daughters, but I felt in my spirit I should teach it with you and go even farther with it. Amen. Now, I want you to hear me by the Spirit of God. To be still has been confused by many people. Now, people confuse being still and waiting on God. The Bible says, those who wait upon the Lord. This is misunderstood with being still. And being still has been misunderstood with waiting on God. Both of these are translations which do mean what they are supposed to mean. But it takes a certain level of understanding to understand the context of what is being said. An example is... How can you wait on a God who has never had a yesterday, has never had a tomorrow, has never had a past, has never had a future? So you can't wait on God. If anything, God is waiting for us. Amen. If he knows tomorrow, now, now, you see, when we say God knows tomorrow. God doesn't only know tomorrow. God ordained tomorrow. Amen. God did not just ordain tomorrow. He's already in your tomorrow. Amen. Because he has never been late, he has never, you, you can't wait for him. He's not delaying whereby you say, now, Lord, uh, I am here waiting for you. No, you can't. So what does waiting on God truly means? The word to wait there is like a waiter. A waiter's duty is to remain at a certain place. That's what to wait means. I'm going to be your waiter, meaning I'm going to be here with you it is not a term meaning that you will be absent and i stay here no it means to attend to so it says those who remain where god is their strength is continually renewed so when you find yourself being weak you can't pray you feel like i i just I don't know. I'm just like having a hard time praying. I feel like I have no energy. I feel like I'm tired. I'm just tired of... It means you don't wait on God. It means you don't remain where he is. Because if you remain where God is, your strength is continually renewed. And your strength is not just continually renewed. What does it mean? What does it say? They shall run and not faint. Meaning that no matter what you do, your output only increases. Amen. It does not decrease. Amen. Let me talk to somebody that wants to hear me. Number one, you will run, never faint. Meaning no matter what, if there is no way, there is a way that will come. Your persistence, your resilience cannot, your resolve cannot be shaken. Are you listening to me? Yes. So nothing about you is changing because you are consistent, spiritually energized. So this is what happens when you wait on God. Not only that, it says, they shall mount up like what? Eagles. Because you are with him, God who sees tomorrow, who is in tomorrow, you have now part to do with him. You share in his sight. So you are able to see tomorrow. You see, eagles don't fly like birds who just fly to a location. Eagles fly high and then they look at where they're going, then they just glide. 
Amen. They don't use effort to fly. Amen. They mount up and then they check. Oh, that's where I'm going. And they just drop. Woo. So you receive what is called foresight. Mm. Ah. So when people say, I want to hear from God. I want to see from God. You immediately understand. You don't attend. You are not a waiter. You don't remain with him. Because a waiter is somebody that is serving God. Remaining in the place God wants them to do. Whatever God requires, they are present. That's what waiting on God truly means. It is not, oh, I'm waiting for God for him to come through. No. That is self-deception. So people confuse waiting on God. You receive <laughs> I love that. I love that. So waiting on God is extremely, completely different than being still. And the reality is you cannot wait on God until you know what it means to be still. Mm. Amen. I feel like I'm talking to myself. Stillness is different from waiting on God. But you cannot wait on God until you know what it means to be still. So when people read this and hear, be still and know that I am God. And I was teaching the, 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 the men and women of God that to be still has nothing to do with trusting God. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying don't trust God. You should. He's the only one we can trust. But being still has nothing to do with my troubles. No matter what I'm going through, I just trust him. Mm. You know, we get spiritual a little bit. Even our shoulders go. <laughs> being still has nothing to do with what happened to you yesterday has nothing to do with, Lord, I'm just crying. I'm just, I'm just going to be here, Lord. Being still has nothing to do with, I am so, my mind just can't seem to focus. Stillness has nothing to do with that. That's not what it means. When you pray, when you walk, and you deal with God. The biggest issue we have in the, especially in the church, is we treat God like our grandfather, our uncle, our auntie. We treat God human. This God we serve is not a human being. This God we serve is a spirit. And if you don't comprehend spirits, You will not comprehend God. God is spirit. And every other spirit was conceived. You know, another name for God in the, in the heavenly realm is they call him the father of all spirit. The word father doesn't mean masculine necessarily. It means source. Source of all things. When we say God the Father, we are saying the source of all things. It's not a term necessarily to just mean masculine. See, Adam is the father of all what? Men. Because every human being came from him. He is the blueprint for every man. That's why when a woman came out of him, it was called woo, man. There's still the word man in there. Because Adam is the blueprint. Is this making sense so far? So understand this by the spirit of God. Is that the God we serve is a spirit. He's not a human being. So if you approach him like a man, you miss. If you think your human sentiments is what will move him, you miss out. If God was moved with mere tears, there would be no world hunger. If God was moved... By pain, 
there will be no troubles. Those are not things that move spirits. Why? Number one, God's mindset is hooked to eternity. So anything that God does, he sees it through an eternal eye. You will be crying for heartbreak, but God looks at your life is like a vapor, not even two seconds to him. You'll cry now, you'll be in heaven. That's a small problem. My issue is for you to make heaven. So already it means from the lens of God, there are tears you cry, it's useless. I'm trying to help you understand something. Because if you're going to get something out of God, you need to understand what moves him. If you don't understand what moves God, you will pray in vain. Thinking like one day he will answer me, no, he will ignore you. Because when you're dealing with God, God only deals with things that will compel him. There are things that God has no choice. He has to attend to it because God cannot resist his own nature. Are, are you listening to what I'm saying? Yes. So when we are praying, we think just because we say in the name of Jesus, he will do it. No. If it is not tied to his eternal purpose, he's doing nothing. So when you are walking with this God, and I see people doing this, and this is why I always laugh at, at, at people, especially who have no spiritual DNA in them whatsoever. Like nothing. You see, me, I didn't learn about God by sitting in church. I learned about the Lord because he appeared to me. I did not grow up in a typically religious home. My mother prayed, loved the Lord. My dad tried everything. There was a time my dad was a touring musician. There was a time he was Buddhist. There was a time he was Muslim. There was a time until he came back to Jesus. They went to Japan. <laughs> this is an interesting story. With, uh, with one of my uncles called uh, uh, Tarsis. We used to call him Baba Cristela because his first, well, he had one daughter. So her name was Cristela at that time. So he he was an amazing guitar player, so they would tour with my father and his old band. So they went to Japan and they decided that we're going to do this Buddhist thing. So they had chains and they all come, their wives pray. <laughs> <laughs> so the first night they go to temple, they start getting into this thing, they sleep. Ah, God knows how to scare Africans because <laughs> there are certain things when we see, we know it's Satan. <laughs> At night they slept, they all had the same dream. All of them, that serpents were crawling on them. Ah, the next morning, they took off their chains. They burnt them. Father, in the name of Jesus. We re <laughs> That's when my father came back uh, uh, from Japan. Ah, when he came from Japan, uh, we are all going to church. I remember now from that moment, my dad used to pray with his hands up. He would kneel and lift his hands up and talk to God. That's, that's when all this changed. African, you say snake, I, I re immediately, Karabashata, serpent spirit. <laughs> Nothing scares Africans more than snakes. Ah. <laughs> so for me, I didn't grow up in a place where people was a typically prayerful environment. They loved the Lord. They prayed, you know, small, small not anything to what we are doing. It's later on in their lives that they got really deep with God. So my experience with God is from literally encounters with the spiritual world. Not because somebody told me. It's because I encountered God. So I did not learn about God simply through the pages of scripture. It was by experience. So when I read now... When I open scripture and I read, I am putting that experience together and it makes sense. But if you just read, you see, your word or your Bible must push you to an experience with God, not head knowledge. Because if you don't comprehend whom you are serving, I am sorry, you're going to be praying so much. And you will even think this God doesn't exist. This is why you find that now those who believe in God starts mixing all these other different beliefs because you have missed him. So you're mixing and piling up all these other things, trying to, uh, um, 
trying to enter into something that will move you or get you spiritual simply because you didn't understand what you're holding. I, I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. So it is paramount for you to not only read the scriptures, but look at God's dealing with men and men's dealing with God in scripture to understand what moves this guy. What moves God? So there are things and there are ways if we position ourselves, even God cannot resist. Let me prove it to you. The Lord Jesus is in scripture saying, these disciples ask him, Lord, why do you teach in parables? A lot of people think parables are language to be understood. No. Whenever Jesus taught in parables, he wanted to confuse people. So his disciples will come and ask him, Lord, why do you teach the crowds in parables? And with us, you tell us plainly. Do you know what his answer was? Because to you, it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom. But to them, it is not given. Then he said this. He said, if I speak in a manner they will understand, then they will repent and I will have to save them. But right now, I don't want to just save them. I want to save the whole world. Amen. So it is better for me to die first. Amen. When I resurrect and I can be sacrificed for all, yeah. then what I am saying will be not in a hidden language anymore. It will be opened. He said, least they repent and I will have to. Meaning Jesus is speaking in a language decoded or coded so that they don't understand him so they can kill him. Because if they understand, he will have no choice. So when you understand God, you can do things that God has no choice. Amen. But to bless. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me talk to Overflow. Overflow can, can feel me. There are things you can do. God has no choice. I'm telling you. Trust me. There are things you can do. When people say, I, I, you just need to be available for God. No, God doesn't like idle people. God wants you to be available spiritually, not physically. Amen. Oh, I'm just idle. You know, one, you know I'm just not going to do this. I'm not going to do that so God can use me. You'll be like, oh. I said occupy until I come back. You're not occupying anything. I'm not interested. Because God doesn't just want your spirit. He wants your body. If you're not somebody that is energetic, ready to go after great goals, then he knows even if he has hold of your spirit, you will have a hard time with your body obeying. That's good. So God needs somebody that is full of energy. That's why the Bible says God loves the youth because they are active. Not that he doesn't love everybody else. He just needs somebody that in their youth, they will be active. That means in their old age, they will be active. Look at Moses. God had to tell him, go and die. God didn't take his eyes and say, Moses, please, you know too much. It is, I can't take your life. Can you go and die? You are trying to pray, God, give me a long life. Moses got to a place whereby, now nah, God has to ask me to die. Because if he doesn't ask me to die, I'm not dying. The Bible says Moses was old, but his eyes were sharp. His mind was sharp. His body was strong. God was like, this guy is already becoming immortal now. My guy, go and die. Go, 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 go and die. So hear me. You need to know this God that you're dealing with. You need to know this God that you're dealing with. When he says, be still, the word still there is the word Rafa. And that word does not mean to stay steady. That word means to sink. To drown. To be immersed. Amen. Amen. It has nothing to do with you being like this. It has everything to do with you drowning or sinking. That's actually the word of being still. So staying steady doesn't mean you will know who God is. But if God says you are a billionaire, 
you take that word and you sink in it. Amen. You see the things that you will do for him. Amen. You see how you will change the world. Then now you will know, you will experience the God. Hallelujah. Let, I'm, I'm trying to bring you somewhere. I'm trying to bring you somewhere where you'll understand. Sit for two seconds. The Lord Jesus said, the words I speak to you, they are spirit. And they are life. To be filled with the Holy Spirit is not a one-time thing. By every biblical standard, it is not. When people say, I am filled with the Holy Ghost, I usually laugh. I'm like, oh, really? Hey, congratulations. If you're just still human-like, you're not filled. Because to be filled is a consistent and continual thing. Because God cannot fill you beyond the capacity that is available. The evidence of being filled, the Bible says that Jesus had the spirit without measure. If you're going to be filled with the Holy Ghost, you have to be like Christ. Because he was the only one who was what? Who carried God in bodily form. So if you are filled, the capacity Jesus carried, you are supposed to carry. This is why when you look at people like Elijah, Isaiah, Ezekiel, and the prophets of the past, when they saw Jesus, what did they say? He must be Isaiah. He must be Elias. He must be... The... It's because they notice the capacity this guy is walking in. It's too crazy and it's even crazier than those people. Why? Because if you are filled with God, it means the natural part of you is swallowed up into the spiritual. Amen. That's good. You think it is you containing God. No. To be filled means to be immersed in him and is the one who is containing you. He's the one that is overshadowing you. Yeah. Notice this. The Bible says this about Mary. Gabriel appears. Pop. Says Mary, Mary. Not Kirk Franklin, Mary, Mary. <laughs> Say Mary, Mary. Ah, you have been favored by God. You will have a child. You will call him this name. You'll be the savior of the world and says all these deep things. Then Mary says, ah. How is this possible? How is this possible? I don't know any man. Notice the word know means to experience. I don't know any man. The answer of the angel of God was very interesting. He said, oh, Mary, relax. The Holy Spirit will do what? Will overshadow you. He will, over, he will cover you up. Notice he did not say it will go into your stomach. He will overshadow you, meaning you will be saturated by you. You will sink into him. And when you sink into him, what is impossible? <laughs> One more. So, good. so for Mary to carry Jesus, it was not a matter of just you will have a child. Mary needed to sink into what was said. Amen. So when the Holy Spirit overshadows her, she begins to think, wow, I am going to carry God. The baby starts forming. So I'm talking to the wrong people. I'd... This is why God needed to tell her. Because what she knows, then she knows I will not be, I will not lay with Joseph because there's something else going on with me. I will carry a child that is from God. I just saw the angel. Let me sink into this thing. Then she heard Elizabeth is pregnant. She said, I got to go see her. When she goes there, notice this is a matter of weeks, not even months. 
So Mary is not even showing. She goes. Elizabeth John bounces. She says, when you greeted me, the baby in me leaped because the mother of my Lord. So they are sinking deeper. I, I don't know if you're capturing what I'm saying. God came to Sarah and told Sarah the same thing he said to Mary. By this time next year, I will visit you and you will carry a son. Next year came, Sarah never sunk into it. Sarah rejected it. She said, ah, I am old. My Lord is old. God doesn't know what he's talking about. Next year came, Abraham sunk into it. Sarah did not. It took 14 years, 13 years, 12 years for her to get pregnant for something that already came a year later. You are not delayed because of demons. You are delayed because you don't sink into what God has spoken. I am prophesying to somebody. May you sink into what the Lord has spoken. May you sink into what God has spoken. Are you listening to me? Let me explain something for you. Two seconds. I don't have too much time, but we are going somewhere. I promise you we are going somewhere. Are you here? Yes. If this makes sense, wave your hands, please. Because you see, we are taught only to receive the word, but we are not told to sink into the word. Receiving the word makes you believe God. Sinking into the word makes you to see God, then faith is activated. Faith is not believing, and believing is not faith. To believe, it means there is a possibility. To have faith, it is done. Not I am waiting for manifestation. If you are waiting for manifestation, you are still believing. Oh, I know you are shocked. It's true. Yeah, you know, I have faith. I'm just waiting for manifestation. No, you don't know. The Bible says, if you pray, believe and you have it. And the word believe there is because of English. But actually says, when you pray, you know it is done and you have it. Meaning you should not start praying when you say amen, you wait for it. People who are believing are the ones who pray like that. Father, I'm just believing that you can do it. Do it, Father. I can't wait to see it. You are praying in the realm of belief. People of faith take what is theirs. Amen. Amen. The kingdom of God suffers violence and the violence, take it. They don't ask. They know it is theirs. They know healing is theirs, prosperity is They know these things are theirs. So some of you are still thinking, God, is it okay for me to be rich? God, is it okay for me to have open doors? Do you really want me to have? You see, my son only asks me for things that he needs me to do. No things that he can do for himself. You're hungry, my guy, go to the fridge. When you are young, I'll hook it up for you and this, this. He grew, he start noodles. This is what you do. <laughs> A little water, you stick it in the microwave, you figure it out. So when I'm not around, you can figure this thing out. It grows a little bit. Auntie Ben's taught him to make fried rice. Yeah, uh, rice and all this. Now, if you're hungry, you say, I'm hungry. I look at you. Are you mad? Go and make your own food. If dinner is not made, well, go and figure it out. It is no longer about me sitting there. Oh, you're hungry. You die. <laughs> so God in the beginning will spoon feed us. And then you mature, you understand how it works. You know how to deal with fire. 
You know how to deal with hot water. So many of you now, you've been in God since 1905. Still trying to make God do things that you can do. He will ignore you. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, let's go into this thing. To sink is not the word of God entering you, but you entering the word. It is not about the word of God entering you. It is about you opening the door of the word and stepping in. Two completely different this is why the Lord Jesus said this, unless you are in me and I in you. When the word of God enters you, it opens you up. That's why it cuts the flesh. And it separates from bone to marrow, spirit from soul. It separates you and opens you up. So that number one, your spirit can go into the word. Your soul can go into the word. And even your body can go into the word. God cannot be exalted among the heathen until there is something supernatural that those who don't believe in God can see. Are, are you listening to me? It's impossible. What are you going to convince them with? If you say, I am rich, there are people in the world doing bad things that are rich. What do you have that money cannot buy? What can you produce? Can people come to you when there is no hope? You see, the Lord Jesus was so deep because not only is God, but he was just too deep. The Bible says, Jesus tells his disciples, go ahead of me, I am coming. They say, okay, cool. They get in the boat, they go. They are like, how is he going to come? You know what? Whatever. <laughs> they go into the sea, going to the other side. While they are traveling, Jesus prayed the whole night, but he just wanted to show them something. Yeah. Sometimes God sends you in the middle of the sea with storms. Sending you ahead so that he can show you who you've been working with that you didn't know. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So Jesus sends them go. Then Jesus leaves the place of prayer. Comes down. The Bible says, finding no boat. He decided to walk on water. But when you read how he walked on water, many of you miss the point says, finding no boat, just said, hey, you know what, let me just walk. He didn't even think about swimming. He said, let me walk. Why did his mind think about walking? Not swimming, no backstroke, uh, butterfly, nothing. Let me wait until the morning. He said, I will walk. Capture this. The Bible says when Jesus was walking, his disciples saw him and they thought they had seen a ghost. Meaning Jesus became translucent. He became a spirit. Because spirits don't drown. Spirits, gravity doesn't hold them. Come on, come on. Come on. So they saw a version of Jesus, but they didn't know it was Jesus. That's why they got scared. There's just so light walking on water. They say, Shadabada Bahaya, ghost. Jesus said, guys, 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 relax. It is me. Peter said, wait, the voice sounds like him, but it doesn't look like him. Do you know what he said? He said, Lord, if it is indeed you, bid me to come. Do you know what it means, bid me to come? Command me to come. Peter was deep. Do you know what Jesus said? He says, then come. Because he was so captivated by what he had seen, Peter also changed. He began to walk on water. But when Peter 
realize that this should not be possible. Notice what the Bible says. It says he saw waves coming through and for it means when waves crashed him, they went through him. But when he thought about it, he said, wait, waves should not be doing this. It glitched. Bzz, bzz, bzz. He came back to the flesh. He said, Jesus, help me. Jesus grabbed him and said, my guy, why did you doubt? He sunk into the experience and he was changed. I prophesy to somebody. May you sink into the word that you have heard. Let me show you this to be true. Let's go to scripture. Sit down. <laughs> Acts chapter 12 from verse 1. Mm, take my jacket. Hallelujah. I, I'm feeling it in my spirit. Now look at this. Are you ready? Now listen to this. Now about the night, th that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. Meaning he was, around, he was killing ninjas. Left, right. <laughs> yeah. And he killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. Verse 13. And because he, had, because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then there were the days of unleavened bread. So they arrested Uncle Peter, taken in. Verse 44. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to the four, that word, of soldiers to keep him, <laughs> intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. He said, I will show an example of this guy. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. People are reba shatala bayakata, sakata bayata. Praying for him seriously. And you will learn something about this. If people are praying for you, but you don't sink into something, it doesn't make a difference. Watch this. We are going somewhere. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Verse 6. <laughs> and when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers. Now the word sleep there, it doesn't mean he snored. Peter was sinking. The same word used here is the same word that God used for Adam in the garden. Adam goes through all animals and sees no helpmate. The Bible says, and God sent him into deep sleep. Why did God send him into deep sleep? Adam was not sleeping. Adam was seeing. That's why when Adam woke up, he said, this is the flesh of my... How did he know? I, I don't know if you can capture it. He said something very strange. The guy was in the know of what God did. Because many of you dream, but you don't sleep. Dreaming doesn't mean you have slept. That's why sometimes you dream about beans you ate last night. You ate something and you're, whoo, it just is like NyQuil. You sleep and you dream different things. <laughs> sleep, ah, uh, repent. <laughs> You see, when you're between two soldiers, you can't dream. Peter was in a sinking position. What does it mean? Peter was in meditation. But this was the life of these guys. They would just be like, on the Lord's day, I was in the spirit. 
They don't say the spirit of God took me. In the Old Testament, many of the people were taken by the spirit of God. In the New Testament, many of the people were in the spirit, meaning that God did not need to take them anymore. They knew where to be. John said on the Lord's day, I, I was in the spirit. Then I heard a voice behind me. God was like, hey, my guy, you got here? How did you get here? We are going somewhere. Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains. How will you, how will you dream? And the keeper before the door kept the prison. Maximum security. Verse 7. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him. <laughs> you didn't read it. The angel of the Lord came upon him. Not the angel of the Lord appeared to him. The angel of the Lord came and took Peter into the spirit. Let's finish. Let's go. Let's. You see, angels don't just appear to serve you on this. They can give you access to them. The angel literally came upon him. And Peter was no longer in the cell. He was on the other. How many people have watched Lords of the Ring? When these guys will put on the ring, they will be in the same place, but on the other side of it. This one is deeper than that. And the angel of the Lord came upon him, not appeared to him, came upon him. And light shined in the prison. The prison became bright. But you will notice something weird here. The guards are not seeing the light. Nobody knows what is happening. They are just there. Look at this. A light shined in the prison and smote Peter on the side and said, Rise up, saying, Arise quickly. So the guy comes upon him and hits him and says, My guy, wake up. Huh? And look at this. And his chains fell off from his hand. It's not saying the chains were broken. The guy entered the spiritual world. Come on. Come on. The, teaching prophet. Come on. the chains went through him. Whoop, Come on. And they fell. That's why it does not say the chains were broken. His clothes accessed the spiritual realm no problem. But what was, what was of the enemy to keep him there fell? <laughs> it fell from his hands. Not broken. It just went through. Whoop. Verse 8. And the angel said unto him, Guard up thyself and bind on thy sandals. Notice his sandals also accessed the spiritual realm because it was his. Come on, teach it, so Peter takes these things. And so he did. And he said unto him, Cast thy garment about thee and follow me. He said, let's go quickly. Now you will understand why the angel was rushing him. Peter does the same thing. Verse 9. <laughs> and he went out and followed him. And wist not that it was true which was done by the angel, but, brought, but thought he was in a vision. Let's read this again. He went out and followed him and did not know that which was happening was real. He thought he was in a vision. Peter was so deep, but he was still conscious. In his mind, he was thinking, man, this vision is deep. God is saving me, huh? So he obeyed the vision, but he did not know that he was in reality. Come on, so good. You see, when you sink so deep, sometimes you see me prophesying. And I say, can't you see the vision? Then I catch myself and say, ah. Oh. I say, can't you see the name? Then I'll catch myself and realize what I am seeing is actually real. The guys around me cannot see because reality is in the spirit, not in the physical. 
This is not something in the mind. It's something that is there. When we say that, when I usually say, and the angel of the Lord appeared to me, and he grabbed my hand and said, and took me. You, you are thinking it's a figure of speech. No, he's, <laughs> he is coming upon me. I am not just hearing a... I'm trying to explain to you something so that your eyes can be open. To know that this is also for you. It's not just for... We are going somewhere. Watch this. And he thought this thing was a vision. That's why you find Paul saying something interesting. I know a man that was caught up to the third heaven. Whether in the flesh or the spirit, I don't know. The guy sunk so much that instead of it just being something you're being shown, you actually start taking part into realities that affect the physical realm. Verse 10. When they were past the first and the second ward, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of its own accord. Every door, notice, it doesn't say the other doors were opened. They went through every door. And when they came to the iron gate, the angel of the Lord opened it. Now you'll know why he opened it. And they went out and passed through the streets. And forthwith the angel departed from him. The angel left him. Because when Peter said, I don't know if this is a vision or real. The moment he did that, he was removed from the spiritual realm. The angel now was beside him. He was no longer swallowed up into the spirit. He interfered with what was happening. So when they came to the iron gate that leads out of the city, notice the prison iron gate was not affected. But the outside gate became affected because Peter began to return to himself, saying this vision is deep, it affected it. Verse 11. And when Peter was come to himself, that is the problem. He was sunken, but the vision was so deep that he began to say, is this real or not? Is it real or not? The more he did that, he became more flesh, more flesh, more flesh. By the time he came to himself, the angel left. And when the angel left, listen to what he says. Now I know of surely, meaning he wasn't sure. That the Lord had sent his angel and had delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. Your deliverance is delaying. Your breakthrough is delaying because you are not sure. You don't sink into the word that is being said. When the word comes, you say, it is deep. But I don't know if it can really happen right now. You start... You see, the physical world is like weights. The more you say, uh, 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 I have this problem, weight is added on you. You can't float into the spirit. God can do it. (laughs) But how am I going to take care of this boom? You are held back. You are sinking into the flesh, not in the spirit. My heart will go on. (laughs) You (laughs) You are drowning in the wrong sense. You see, the Bible says this. uh, uh, John said it like this. He says, I baptize you. With water. The word baptism means to be immersed. To be drowned. He said, I am baptizing you with water. But there is one that is coming after me. He will immerse you into the spirit. You don't get it still. He said, when Jesus comes, 
Me, I can just make you enter water so that your sins can be removed. But the one that is coming, he will baptize you into the spiritual world. Amen. The physical and the spiritual will be alike. Amen. Amen. If something is troubling you in the physical, you can enter the spiritual law. Amen. This is why the Bible tells you, you do not wrestle against what? Meaning you should change the way you fight the devil. You fight the devil by praying for a If you learn to enter the spiritual, you crush him. Because from this side, you can't really fight him. But on this side, you are a giant. On this side, things may be holding you. On this side, Jesus is beside you. Verse 12, I'm about to finish. And when he had considered this thing, he now considered it. He thought of it. Ah, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose son name was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. He came to the same house, verse 13. And as Peter knocked, wait, why are you knocking? Iron gate opened, prison gates you went through, the chains fell through. It doesn't matter how much greatness God has put in you. If you don't know how to sink in the spirit, you will knock doors. So good. You will knock in places that actually you belong. Imagine this is the place they are praying for him. This is where the spiritual manifestation should have been greater. This is where shaka, angels should have been there, but nobody was there. And Peter knocked at the door of the gate. And a damsel came to hearken and named, named Rhoda. Verse 14. And when she knew Peter's voice, she went, opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. Verse 15. Look at the people. This is why I don't like intercessors. They pray and then they don't believe in results. I love prophetic people because they can see results. Amen. Intercessors pray too much. And they don't even believe for answers. The young lady was so excited that our prayer has been answered. She ran, oh my gosh. Peter is here. But when she said that, they didn't say, praise God, are you sure? Do you know what the answer was? Are you mad? These guys were Africans. <laughs> and they said unto her, thou art mad. Why are you praying when God does supernatural things? You start calling it wizardry. <laughs> Father, we are praying for a revival. America will be revived. God takes a handsome young African man, plants him in America. You start seeing the supernatural. Amen. Your response is, this has to be fake. Yeah. This has to be. Come on. Why are you really praying for revival? Come on. Why are you really praying for revival? Why are you praying for revival? No, you are saying something that you saw the William Seymour's, the Catherine Kuhlman's, and all these people did. You, you wanted that thing that is gone. And what America doesn't understand is this. Every revival God ever did in America came from California. True. 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 Uh-huh. Uh-huh. He is the same yesterday, today, and he doesn't change what he does. 
The greatest revivals that brought people back to Christ happened from this place. Yeah. Am I not saying the truth? Truth, truth, pure truth. 100% true. And you would think I brought myself here. No, God told me about coming here when I was six. I am sending you to, to a country. This place that you will be is surrounded by mountains. It will be a valley. That's, I didn't even know what these things were. I wasn't even trying to. Me, I never wanted. This is what I'm doing now. I am compelled. You know when you are called by God, you are compelled. You are summoned. When you are summoned, you can't do anything about it but do it. Amen. Oh, Father, we want to see miracle signs and wonders. You see a blind person opening their eyes. You say they are actors. You see deaf people hearing. You say, ah, everyone is in on it. And you'll notice the people who doubt the power of God. I call them ex-church members. They're not even, they don't even go to church. They are the movement of find God for yourself. They'll say, why do you, I don't even believe in tithe. Yes, because you don't give. When was the last time you ever gave to God? You don't even give. Get out of the subject. You're not part of it. They'll be like, yeah, that's why I don't even go to church anymore. That's why you shouldn't talk about church. You know nothing about church. Amen. The Bible says that do not forsake the gathering of the brethren. You are saying, go just home and read your Bible. These are the people that are making some of you. Instead of sinking into God, you start fighting what is yours and what should take you to where God has ordained you to be. Amen. People will come and say, ah, I, I need a baby. I say, no problem, I'll give you a baby. They say it's witchcraft. Yet Eli Elisha, he was living with a woman who made an in for him. He said, what can I do for this woman? She's been good to us. They said, ah, uh, you know, the, his servant said, she looks like she doesn't have a child. She would like to have a son. He said, no problem, I'll give her one. You see, Peter goes to the temple, finds somebody asking for silver and gold. He comes and he says, silver and gold I don't have, but what I have. You see, people who are not sunk, they will say, God sent a miracle. But when God wants to bless a people, he brings people who have sunk into the word. Amen. That they can just take it out of them and give. Amen. Hallelujah. May you be that man, that woman that can reach into what God has given. Within you and you produce it. Are you here? Yes. See, sit down for two seconds. I promise I'm finishing. I'm just waiting for Mike. So, so capture this by the Spirit of God. When was the last time you sunk? When was the last time you did what? You sunk. When was the last time? That a word that was spoken to you, you took it, you ate it, until you, you are now the word that was spoken. You don't just believe it, but you became, the, you became it. The Bible says you are a written epistle, you are a walking scripture. The problem is you are a scripture that you don't live by. You want to be what Moses said, not what God said to you. Moses lived his scripture. What has God said to you? What has God said to you? What did you receive from God and you said, mm. Mm.
you need to be in a place where you drown. Even when people have conversations with you, you find yourself saying, Amen, God bless you, God can do it. You, you, they're like, what? I remember I would have conversations, especially when I was really doing more music stuff back in the day. I'll be in sessions and whatever, and they'll be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be like, yeah, God can do it. Uh-huh. Okay. They'll be like, oh, I'll be like, amen to that. They'll be like, yeah, a- amen. <laughs> but you, are, you have drowned. That even the language you speak, you see, I love 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6, because it always speaks of, of, of the depth of language. The depth of spiritual language. That may seem human to somebody. But you're speaking spiritual things. First Corinthians 2.6. I'll finish with this. One of the ways you drown. Into what God has spoken. It has to become part of your language. Because everything that God does. Is preceded by a word. The word sets the atmosphere. For the man that will walk into it. How be it, we speak wisdom among them that are perfect. Now, listen to what it says. The word wisdom there, wisdom is not knowledge. We don't speak knowledge. We speak wisdom. Meaning that the language of wisdom is strategic. It's a, you are already setting things where they should be. Knowledge is I am knowledgeable. Wisdom is the application of knowledge. So a child of God does not speak facts. We speak truth. The fact is you may be broke. The truth is you are rich. Your account has just not seen the deposit. Let me, I I want to talk. The medical report is the Facts that doctors are giving you. This is not working. That is not working. This is not working. The truth by his stripes. You are healed. The truth is you shall see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Not in heaven. It begins here. It begins right now. One second, Uncle Mike. One second. Uh, I'm finishing, I promise you. Just give me two seconds. Two seconds. We are, we are finishing, I promise. Yeah. He, 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 hear this. Hear this. So when you speak, you see, the Bible says, let him that speak, speak as an oracle of God. It doesn't say let him that prophesies. Junior prophets or wannabe prophets, they won't like what I'm saying, but it's the truth. If you don't like it, come, we will teach you. I have no problem. We want many more people to carry the prophetic. I'm telling you. (laughs) If you don't prophesy, you are not a prophet. Sit down. Words of knowledge is no prophecy. If your word cannot create or ordain or set things in motion, sit down. A prophet doesn't only say what God has said. A prophet can say something and God will back it up. That's what makes a prophet. That their words don't fall to the ground. It's not God said, Holy Spirit said, that is true. Stop. That's why we are confusing people in the world because people who have nothing to do with the prophetic, maybe you dreamt one or two times, five times, doesn't make you a prophet until you know how to dream dreams. Listen, I can close my eyes here for five minutes. I will know everything about you within five minutes. Everyone in the church. Do you know why? I know how to hear God even when I close my eyes. I can dream a dream. It doesn't mean I will sleep and then God will talk to me. No. I know how to dream dreams. 
If you cannot dream a dream, you're not a prophet. Sit down. Oh yeah, God showed me what will come. It is true, he can. I'm not saying he cannot. But if you cannot recreate the same scenario. I've been prophesying for 30 years, since I was six. Consistently. <laughs> are, you, are you listening to me? We have no problem, we will teach you. But remove the title prophet, you are not. Remove it. Be the apostle God you to, called you to be. Be evangelist, be pastor. There's nothing wrong with that. Stay in your lane. God can enhance you so that you have more. But stay in your lane. Get out of this prophetic business. It's not for you. I'm seeing, you know, I'm seeing, I'm sorry, I'm going to go on a little rant. I am, I am seeing people making foolish posts like this. If you have a gift... Did it come from the Holy Ghost? If it is not, it is witchcraft. Yet the Bible says, all, all what? All perfect gifts comes from above. The devil has never given a single human being a gift. Amen. Demons can use people, but that is not a gift. When you are a junior person, you know nothing. You don't even know that those who are called by God, they don't receive gifts when the Holy Spirit came. The Bible says it like this. When Christ ascended, he gave gifts to men. Some prophets, some apostles, they are men that are gifts. And then they are those who are gifted by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Stop teaching things you don't know. Sit down. Yes. You are destroying the body. Sit down. Yes. You don't know what you are talking about. This is the problem of, uh, the Lord told me, the Lord told me, shut up, sit down. I'm being honest. I'm saying the truth. Sit down. Get out of you. Don't know the spiritual world. Sit down. God comes to Jeremiah and tells him, before you are born, I ordained you a prophet. Jeremiah was not filled with the Holy Spirit when he was, in the, when he was uh, physical. From the mother's womb, John already was anointed. Moses did not come and then he was already like that. The activation may be at another time. Stop. Stop it. Prophets only confirm what you know. Who told you that? Read in the Bible. How many times did prophets go and tell somebody something? They had no idea. They didn't even believe it. And then they come back, they say, oh, the Lord spoke by you. Who told you prophecy is confirmation? Where do people get these doctrines? The reason why we show you that we know your past is so that when I tell you of the future, you believe God. Amen. But do I need to? I don't need to. Imagine you come to a person who knows exactly where you came to see them. Not just giving you, ah, the Lord said he would do. Ah, how do we know the Lord said? You don't know where I came from. You don't know my pain. You don't know what I'm praying for. Sit down. Zip it. You are not a prophet. You want the prophetic, it is good. Desire to prophesy. But don't think you know the prophetic. Sit down. Sit down. Sit. I'm being honest. Sit. Be what God calls. You see, when God calls you to be something... You'll be the most effective in... Look at, look at, let, let me give you an example. You will never hear me hate on anybody that is called by God. I will never mention names. Even if they are know that you preach Jesus Christ crucified, you preach Jesus the only way, I will never interfere. Even if you don't, it's your problem. I'm doing my thing. When God sends us to work in the field, he did not say, look at what your neighbor is doing. I am busy looking at the flock that God gave me. Amen. What you do, you answer to him. I didn't hire you. I didn't employ you. That's your business with him. I'll pray for you. I'll pray for the flock. But I want him to say, that's between you and Jesus. That's between you and Christ. I didn't hire you. I'm not, I'm, no. 
Uh, by the time I'm looking at you, I will be missing what God is saying to my people. I will be missing what God wants to lead my people into. Look at Pastor Joel Austin. Don't worry about tomorrow. <laughs> Look at how many souls have known Jesus because of, you may not like him. Doesn't change that he's preaching Jesus. Hey, he's winning people. You, you want this prophetic thing. Look at a man just staying in his lane. Look at how much he has saved people. Amen. Not everyone is called to come out. I see in the spirit. Sit down. You are more effective in where God has called you. The grace of God will be there for you where he has called you. Amen. We are graced. When I see young prophets, I tell them this all the time. I am not what I am. Because of my giftings, and I have many. Not because of that. People sit down because the word I speak brings them closer to Jesus. I know what he sent me to preach. My gift just edifies the body where I am. But if I never prophesied a day and I just preached, you will still be here. Because when you go home, you can sink into what you have been told. Amen. You can walk on what you have been taught. Amen. That is the truth of it. Just stick to it. Some of them think, okay, yeah, if I do it like this, no. First of all, prophetic, we are not even in the same realm. Just don't even try. Don't try this at home. I'm being honest. Just don't try it at home. <laughs> don't try it at home. I have men of God. The ego that never lands. I have men of God that investigate, sent people to make sure, is what he's doing really real? Later they come and confess. Ah. How? Uh, somebody said expose them. No. <laughs> No, they were in doubt because they have not seen it in that way. I understand that. Even me, I would have been a skeptical of me. I don't, I'm not mad of, at them. Just believe that God can do anything. The moment you say God cannot, he is not God. Amen. Just believe the Lord Jesus. If you say God doesn't talk like that, who are you to tell God how he will talk? God doesn't heal like that. How, who, who are you to tell him how to heal? A God who said, go marry a prostitute. A God who said, go and preach naked for years. Are you sure you know this God you're talking about? Mm -hmm. Let me finish. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect. The word perfect there is mature. Yet not the wisdom of this world, not the strategies of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to nothing. Meaning the language of the earth produces nothing. Verse 7. Verse 7. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. When we are speaking the wisdom of God, it's a mystery. It's entangled in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom, meaning it was hidden, which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Our language is a language that was before the earth was formed. There were those who are called to speak that language. It is not a language of people who just picked up the Bible. It's a language that was founded from the beginning so that you can be glorified so God can be seen. You know God is invisible. How will God reveal himself to carnal men who have no eyes to see in the spirit? God has to take somebody, lift that person up, overshadow that person that when you see their life, it doesn't make sense. How did they become successful? How are they doing this? Why is it everything they are touching is working out? Why is it after all these errors, they are still at the top and they keep rising? How is this happening? You talk to them, they say, but God. Amen. 
Are, are you listening to me? Yeah. It ends with that simple statement, but what? So there is a language. What is that language? This is how you sink. You no longer say, I will be prosperous. Everything must be, I am. Yeah. I will be healed. No, I am healed. Amen, amen. One day I will make it. No, I am walking in the place Amen. of making it. Hallelujah. Every language you speak must be already moving you into that time. Amen. Because the more you do that, you sink this flesh because your soul. Let me tell you a secret about the soul. Can I have two more minutes, please? Real two minutes. Five. Okay, I receive. Hear this, and this is a reality. Your soul cannot tell the difference between the past and the present and the future. It, it cannot tell. Your conscious mind can, but your soul cannot. Your soul can't tell. This is why if you have trauma, that trauma follows you everywhere because your soul cannot tell whether it happened in the past or it's happening right now. So if you meet somebody, you may bring your insecurities or your trouble because you are still reliving the past right now thinking you left it. So when you go to therapy, they start telling you, oh, do you remember what happened with your mother, your father, your grandparents or that relationship or this and that? Then you start realizing, this is why I do what I do. I push people away. I resist people. I, I, I can't accept any help. Because to you, you are in 2023, but you are still in 1996. Thinking you escaped the experience. No, it is still with you. So your soul cannot tell. Until you address your soul and say, my guy, this thing actually passed. Then you'll be like, oh, really? It's in the past? Yeah, they don't feed us. They don't do anything. Oh, yeah, actually, yeah. Why are we carrying this? So your soul will attain or hold on to anything, thinking it is happening right now. Some of you failed 10 years ago. Because it was something you put your hopes in and it failed. Every time you see a situation, you are already declaring it will not work. Without saying anything, your body language. Because if your body has a language, it means your body speaks. Uh -huh. I don't know if this works, man. I, I just... <sighs> mm. I think, it, yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. So you start closing doors yourself. There were two teams, professional basketball players, and they were testing the power of meditation. One group was practicing shots for three days consistently. And the other team, when the others were practicing, their duty was to meditate for the amount of time they practiced. All of them, so the whole team will be in the same room. The other ones are on the court, and these ones are in a room simply Meditating, seeing themselves shoot shots. After a few days, they put them in the court to see who shot better. The ones that meditated were way better. Like, almost improved dramatically. More than the people who were shooting shots. Because you may be shooting shots, but your soul is somewhere else. But when you meditate, your soul is present. So now, Jesus said, all the scripture says it like this. The Lord said, my words will not return unto me void, number one. But it shall accomplish what he was set out to do. Meaning when God speaks, that word remains 
until it is used, then it comes back when the results have come. So when God said in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, let us make man in our image and our likeness. Let them have dominion. Let them subdue. Let them do this. Let them do that. All men have not accomplished that word. That word is still in earth. So somebody who can sink into that word has moved the timeline back to the garden when they spoke to God. I don't know if you're getting what I'm trying to tell you. The words I speak to you, they are spirit and their life. They don't pass. Meaning what God said to Jeremiah, whoever is in 2023, if they can sink into it, they take what Jeremiah had and they will have it in 2023. Hallelujah. I, I, I think the overflow got it. Maybe online people got it. I don't know who got it. The problem is you are taught to memorize the word. It's good, nothing wrong. But you have not been taught to sink into the word. You are not sinking. Because the moment your soul does not know, you see, you struggle with faith. Because you don't know how to navigate your soul. You don't know where to place your soul. Because if the soul is not aligned to what is being said, then it is far. But if the soul is immersed in what is being said, then the soul attains it. Faith becomes easy. You believe because your soul can receive it. But faith is a soul and a spirit that has sunk into what God has said. They are in the experience of what God has said. Today I will anoint everybody and I will have, I will have oil that I will pray for and I will send some... The, in different parts of the church, there will be other people that will anoint you, but it will be my own oil that I will pray for. Amen. Everyone will be anointed. Amen. When you are anointed with the oil, touch the oil, and you can touch your own lips. Say, Father, from today, I am only speaking mysteries. I don't need to understand how it will happen. I know it is happening because once I sink, the angels of God will come to my aid. The Spirit of God will push me to my destiny. From now on, I will be changing the law. From the physical law to the spiritual I will no longer move the way I used to move. This is key, children of God, because if you miss it, I don't care how many buckets of oil you're dipped into, how many times you get baptized, how many times you cry, Oh, Father, Father, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Ah, it's not changing. It can't change. It will only change when you take Jesus' word to be true. It will only change when you take God for his word. Don't try to help God. Are you listening to me? Don't try to help who? Don't help him. God doesn't need your help. He doesn't need my help either. Let's just take him for what he said. He said, I will do it. Hey, God, you can do it. I don't need to figure it out. I don't need to try to solve it. Unless he gives me wisdom. Be still means to drown, to sink. Be in the positive sunken place, please. Not the get out one. <laughs> be trapped into God's word. Let it be like a net that grabs you. That you can't even shake it off because what God has said is your reality. 
the moment you sink into the truth of the word of God, ah, 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 ah. this is why Satan wants you to be troubled. This is why Satan wants you to be disappointed because he knows it would distract you from sinking. I'm going to pinch her here. I'm going to pinch him here. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. If they continue to complain, they can't sink. I need to keep their soul occupied with the past and anxiety of the future. But Jesus said, rest. If you rest in God, then to sink is easy. And to remain in his presence or to wait on him becomes even easier. But if one trouble moves you, everything uh, somebody says shakes you. Somebody calls you, start, what's really wrong? Uh-uh, why are you in always, why can't it be good news? <laughs> Even how you receive bad news determines if you are in him or not. The Bible goes as far as to say we don't mourn like the word mourns. I remember I put out, uh, uh, I think, uh, one of my pages, Moments with Elias, put this out. And I was saying that believers are not victims. We are victors. We are victors. We are not those who are like uh, 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 complaining and crying and whatever. And somebody wrote, how can you say that? Uh, do you know what people's pains are? I was like, you don't know pain. I know pain. I started losing people from the age of, of seven or eight. I have seen most of my family go. I know what it is to be hungry. I know what it is to be left outside. I know what it is to be forsaken. You will never win a battle as long as you're complaining. Jesus said you are more than conquerors. You want to be comfortable where there is pain. You should not want that. Why would you want that? Why have we accepted weakness in the kingdom of God? I'm not saying that things don't hurt. But is it better for you to remain in the place of hurt or to outgrow it? If that one could do it, I can do it also. We just want, it's like we are enjoying pain. I didn't mean to say things didn't hurt. Actually, I go as far as to say, yes, things can hurt. Then what? I remember saying, dang, Lord, you took my brother Christian kind of early. Like, ah, my guy just left two kids like that. Do you know what the Lord told me? My son also, I took him early. <laughs> I said, oh, Father, forgive me. <laughs> he said, he's here with me. What do you want? I know what I have planned for his kids. You can't manage it. I know what I have. What I have ordained for them. I kept quiet. What are you going to do? Cry. God took his own son early. His own son went through suffering. But at the end of it, he went through that so that we can be victorious. Not victims. Don't allow our... I'm sorry, I'm going to say it. Our societies in the world have become weak. Too much crying, unnecessary things. Offended about everything. I pray I offend you big time. So you can change. Amen. Everything is offensive now. Yet they will say we are tolerant. Why can't you tolerate what I say? Why does it have to be what you want me to say? And why am I responsible for your joy? If I say something you don't like, it's whatever. I don't believe it, so what? If I was moved by what people say, I would have been somewhere in a crying. I would have been. But I don't even worry about my son, my nephews, and all, the, all of them growing up and seeing what they have said. about. It doesn't move me because they know me. So what? If we were worried about what people are saying, we would not be here right now. I would have been, ah, these people. Why, am, Lord, why did you even say, me? just let me be. I don't want to do it. It's easy to do. Because some people, the ones that you will help, the ones you will help that were at the brink, brink of dying, they'll be the first ones that crucify you. I have seen it 10 million times. 
Some that never even sat with me, have never even been at the table with me. They have never even communicated with me directly. Yeah, we used to go to his house. Where? <laughs> Where? What time? That we have chosen to live a life whereby we don't even talk to people. My family is enough. My spiritual family is enough. We have secluded ourselves because we have understood human beings. The wickedness of man knows no bounds. Let me be honest with you. Satan is bad, but human beings are worse. Now I'm telling you the truth. That is why Satan, to do the worst, he will go to a man so that he can allow their imagination to create even more wicked things than the devil can even think of. This is true. God destroyed the earth in Genesis 6, not because of Satan. Because of the imagination of man was continually, if God said, what kind of, what kind of is this? <laughs> it's bad. Today, choose to control your own destiny. What God has said to you, control it by what comes out of you. Not what people said, not what people think, not what people desire. No. Nope. Do you. Touch your neighbor, say, do you. do you. Remain in what God has called you to do. Remain in what God has called you. Say it with your chest. Remain in what God has called you to do. God has called you to do. Do you. Do you. And allow God to bless you in time. And allow God to bless you in time. Yeah. Hallelujah. Don't let somebody determine what you will be. If I listened to what people said before even, even the ministry, and I would not be here. Ah, you want to do this ministry thing. Do you know how difficult it is? I always looked at it and said, why does it have to be difficult? Because it was difficult for you. Do you know how it is crazy to keep people? I said, they're not my people. <laughs> what should I worry about keeping them? They're his people. Do he sends, I will do what I need to do. Whether they stay, they go. That's between them, not me. I am not interested in keeping you in here. I want you to be blessed and go and bless others. Amen. So a new people can come. We bless them, they go and bless others. Amen. Not membership where you just sit. 100 years, you're still sitting. That means somebody outside has nowhere to sit. We want to empower you so you can win souls for Jesus. That's the goal. That's the goal. Not just having occupying space, no. How can you accumulate all this blessing, all this knowledge, all this understanding, and you just sit? That's called spiritual stinginess. I want you to lift your hands and begin to pray. Say, Father, today give me the grace to sink. I let go of my worries. I let go of my past. I let go of all these things. Lord, I want to sink in you. I want to sink in you. I want to sink in you. May nothing hold me back that I may receive everything that you have for me. Lord Jesus, help me. I am casting my burdens on you. My worries on you. Sickness on you. Lack on you. Confusion on you. Lord, I want to be light so that I may sink in what you have Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray.
Riva dosbe, makariva nusto behindes, la pa kude vini prado ve nikrasatu, sedu va la brava kido ribinapa, nipa costa va lapi. We are not worried about the past, oh God. We are not worried about our mistakes, our past failures, our past selves. Cause us to sink today. Cause us to sink today. Devo raba sandes. Lift your voices and pray. Lift your voices and ask him to cause you to sink. Sedu balabre divini padaste. Rupa candele nista batos. Ripa kadaba du prendiga nosta ante. Lobande le matra daba nisto rebe. Ripa kadaba nusto ribeniba. Make us go deeper. Cause us to go deeper. Cause us to sink. Cause us to be in you and you in us. Rita daba la prendiba nosta le makis. Rupa la panasta bakure de benepe. May we sink so low that we become unrecognizable. We release our old minds. We release our old thoughts. We release our old ways. We release old feelings. Cause us to sink. Cause us to sink. Pray, pray, lift your voices and pray. Pray, riba da basante, sento karabasante. Sing today. Lift your voices and sing today. If you are tired of your old selves, sing today. Sento kariba lapa. Rupa na fika zote, se pala kita varus de mekides. Rupa tala basun de mekipra, me kusta baku de menipra daku. Pedu la basundes, rika tatu balas de bakure de sepe. Ripa la basunte, don't get tired, don't get tired of praying, don't get tired of praying. Cause to sing today, sing today. Zetu kani balapa, ripa noste kiba nosko, bepra ta kiba no pretiba, zima nasko bakuste, ripa pati le nipa nose, zamba kure mediste, bepra te kiba lapi, zopa ni kada basunde le mikre tiba, ripa no te kina masante, rupa daska, zepa nuste, lika toni me nipa sande, ripa la bahande le nikra no me nipa. Zedos, 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 Zedos. Ripa kuste vedesa, me pa kule mikandis. Rupa tali basundes, ripa kali banate de basunde de mekis. Esto rabasande de biaba, ripa na mele nikra soba, azone le misto kandis. Vedu vadi banasto, vedu kali banasto. In Jesus' name, lift your right hand to heaven. 
your right hand to heaven. Say, King of Kings, King of Kings, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. My Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As I lift my right hand, as I lift my right hand, I receive the power of the Holy Spirit. I receive the power of the Holy Spirit that will be manifested in everything I touch. That will be manifested in everything I touch. From today, O oh Lord. From today, O oh Lord. As my right hand touches my mouth. As my right hand touches my mouth. My tongue has been empowered. My tongue has been empowered. My tongue has been fortified. My tongue has been fortified. Whatsoever I shall speak. Whatsoever I shall speak. Shall not fall to the ground. It shall not fall to the ground. It shall accomplish. It shall accomplish. Your desires. Your desires. Let Mark 16, 17. Let Mark 16, 17. Be fulfilled wherever I go. Be wherever I go. May, signs May signs follow my words. May you confirm me by the signs that will follow me. In the mighty name of Jesus, lift up your hand and pray and then touch your lips while you're praying. your voice lift up your voice situations I want you to speak to what situations. I want you to speak to every single thing that is going on in your life and command them to be compelled by your words because of Jesus Amen. command those situations to position themselves differently lift up your voice and begin to pray
Jesus name Jesus name Are you here Yes Say father in the name of Jesus Father in the name of Jesus Increase my capacity to receive 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 in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord my God. Increase my capacity to receive. Pray for five seconds. Open your mouth and speak to God. Father, I thank you for the oil that is here. That, Lord, your presence is within it. Your power is within it. The power of the Holy Spirit. As your people are anointed today, let what you have deposited in me be deposited also in them. Give them foresight. Give them insight. Preserve them. Give them understanding of what you want them to do. From today, may they carry the prophetic unction that whatsoever they bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever they loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Yes. Father, as they are anointed, may they walk in their purpose. Yes. May they walk in their calling. May they walk in the strength of your, of your word. Yes. That whatsoever they do from today, may the results Truly reveal that Jesus Christ, you live forever and ever and ever. Amen. Father, give them the ability to transform from what they used to be into the image of your son Jesus. Yes. That where there are floods, they will walk over it. Where there are closed doors, they will walk through it. Yes. May they no longer need the help of a man to carry out a duty that you have given them. Yes. Give them resources beyond what man can give. Yes. Let them remain in their opportune time as long as they walk on the earth. Yes. Father, I thank you. Father, I glorify you. In the mighty name of Jesus, somebody shout amen. Amen. When we begin to anoint you, please come prayerfully. Don't just come and lift your hands. Be prayerful. Let it be in a mode of prayer. Saying, Father, I take everything. Father, I take everything. Father, I walk in that place. Father, I walk in my purpose. Father, I... let it become prayerful. Stir up what God has put in you. Don't wait. Be prayerful. The longer it takes to get to you, the more time you have to pray. Can you hear me? Yes. Are you sure you can hear me? Yes. Are you sure, sure, sure? Yes. As we worship God, the uh, uh, apostle, you guys can go to the overflow and, and let's, let's start praying for people. Lift your hands to him as they go to their place. Ela masuta le brande de hisa le mara de behezo from monde le kista acre ne me sente andre de behezo colia ma ande le behasa romande le behazi katele mahasuta if you are watching from home grab your anointing oil if you don't have anointing oil even take water it's symbolic even take water I'm giving you seven seconds so I can pray for what you have at home. Whether it's anointing oil or water. 
If you don't even have water, take even your lotion. Today, God will use it. Amen. Amen. It's just symbolic. There's no power in olive oil. There's power in Jesus. Amen. I thought I would hear a bigger amen. Amen. Oh, Lord. Father, I pray for all those who are at home, whether they have water, oil, Holy Spirit, touch it. Use it as your vessel today. If you could use handkerchiefs, you can use anything. As we anoint people here, as they anoint themselves, let the same activation come to pass because you are the God that we serve. We don't look to anybody but accept you, Jesus. Make it happen for them now, Father. In Jesus' name. Somebody shout amen. 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 Clap your hands if you believe the Lord. I said clap your hands if you believe the Lord. Where's my own oil? Everybody took their oil. Okay, give me this one. This one. Now, they are going to instruct you on how to come. We are going to be... Uh, let's find a deep worship song that we can sing into Jesus. So that people can be in a mode of prayer. And they are going to start directing you to come. Are you ready? I'm waiting for you, Uncle Mike. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. You reign on the throne, for you are God. sing to you this song I just want to say that I love you more than anything I lift my hands in total adoration and adore you just want to tell you Lord I love you more than anything I love you Jesus I worship and Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Oh, I love, I love you, Jesus. I worship, I worship and adore.
Is that part of you? Huh? Okay. Hey. So you know, is it, whose baby is it? It's your? It's my granddaughter. Okay, okay. Leave her. Come out. Come out. Come out of her. Come, come out. In Jesus' name. Never come back again. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. She's free. Look at me. Huh? Oh, no, don't thank me. Thank Jesus. Is it your daughter? It's your daughter? Come, come, come to me. What's your daughter's name? Angelina. Angelina, wake up. Angelina, are you okay? <laughs> come on, mama. Hi. Hi. Are you okay? What happened? Uh, I don't remember. You don't remember? Jesus set you free. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Would you live for him now? <laughs> you live for him now? Yes. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I give you my life. I give you my life. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jesus. For delivering me. Thank you, Jesus, for delivering me. Amen. Amen. Look at me, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The devil wanted to suicide your daughter. Yes. She wanted yes. to kill herself. That's true. I saw the spirit of death that was trying to make her to harm herself. The Lord said you brought her to the right place. She's free now. <laughs> Hallelujah. You can celebrate Jesus better. Listen to me. When this oil touches you, when the oil touches you, you see, many times we can prophesy to anyone. But in reality is how much time is there. Sometimes we see things, but we don't have time to talk. I saw when she did manifest, I saw the, the evil spirit holding on to her. And the angel of the Lord told me we arrested the spirit because he wanted to make this young girl kill herself. I saw her trying to take pills. She's trying to suicide herself. But look at Jesus. Just the, when this oil settles on you, Amen. how can a demon hide in you? Hey. <laughs> can you hear me? Yes. Somebody shout power. Power. Somebody shout Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Somebody say power. Power. This is the God that we serve. Amen. Amen. That's why I'm saying again, when you come up, come up prayerfully. No matter what part of the church you're in, where you're being anointed, come what? Prayerfully. Are you still here? Yes. Okay. Let's keep worshiping God. Let's keep worshiping God. Mountains are still being moved. Struggles are still being loose. God, we believe. Yes, we can see. The wonders are still what you do.
wife's nephew. Your wife's nephew? Okay, the, the, the angel of the Lord, when I prayed for him, he told me um, he needs to be careful. I saw that they had arrested him or put him away. And I saw that the enemy is planning again to get him arrested and to be put away this time for a long time that he won't come back. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. He has, yes. he has been in trouble in the past. Yes. yes. And they put him away. Yes. Are you listening to me? Especially 2018 was a bad year for this guy. A lot of things happened to him. The Lord said, when you leave this place, be careful. God wants to bless you. I saw you, if you remain diligent with God, I saw you working on cars, you know, like uh, cars. And I saw you having a shop where cars were being brought in and cars were being repaired. And it was actually your place. The Lord said, be diligent. Come out of those ways. Follow after Christ. Your future is greater than what you think. Are you listening to me? Stay out of trouble, but the only way you stay away is by being in Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
My son, stand up. Stand up. Stand up. You're one of the few people that God will raise big time. And I prayed for you for something. In a little bit, you'll see it. My heart just loves you. Even when I want to resist, why is God doing this? I understand what God wants to do. In a little bit, if you keep yourself the same way you're keeping yourself, diligent with God, loving God, in a little bit, <laughs> what God will do with you, if you remain faithful to God, you will see what God will do. I don't say things to say things. I know what I'm saying. I know what I'm saying. I prayed for you different from everybody else because he told me to do something for you in a little bit. I won't talk. It shall be seen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me tell you what God loves. There's nothing that pleases God like purity. When somebody is pure, purity doesn't mean you don't stumble. Purity doesn't mean you don't miss it. Purity simply means you're innocent. Even in your mistake, it's in innocence, not deliberate. God loves that because that's the heart of a child. We are children of God. A child makes mistakes. A child can miss it. Keep yourself like that. I know what I'm saying. They are not clapping for you because they are jealous. Listen. People travel to ask me what God told me to pray for you for. You didn't even ask, he told me. If you will remain faithful to the Lord and to the house, the main thing for you will be, can you carry somebody else's vision, not your own? That's really the key. Faithfulness it is impossible for a man to be faithful to God without serving a vision that is not their own. That's where faithfulness comes in. And the boy Samuel ministered unto the Lord in the presence of who? Eli. Not in his own presence. If you can do that, ah, there is no one in the world that will not know who you are. And you'll be known for the right reason. A time will come where I can't go, you will go. Yeah. You still don't understand what I'm telling you. I'm telling you something. There are places I will not be able to go. Sending you will be like I've gone there. There are places God, Paul could not go. He will only go if somebody was there. One of his sons he loved too much. That his presence was as if Paul was in a place. Listen. I am not just prophet. My name is Lovie Elias. I know what I'm saying. Amen, amen. I know what I'm saying. If I tell you God will lift you, trust me, he will lift you. Amen. If I say you are dying, trust me, you will die. I know what I'm saying. I know who is in my ear. Lift your hands where you are. 
Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. I receive the grace. I receive the grace. For the impossible. For the impossible. Father, I receive the grace. Father, I receive the grace. For the impossible. For the impossible. Grab what you want to give to God. Remember from today. Be a person that can sink into the word. Be a person that can be what? Sink into the word. Sinking into the word of God. Not just hearing it. Not just attempting to do it physically. Man ought to be spirit. You ought to be what? Spiritual. You have to be spirit. You can't be surface man. You have to be more. You have to be what? More. You have to be more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift it to heaven. Lift what you want to give to heaven. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Lift it up to heaven. Say, Father. Father. I honor you with my sacrifice. I honor you with my sacrifice. I honor you because you are my God. I honor you because you are my God. Thank you for the blessing. Thank you for the blessing. As I return it unto you. As I return it unto you. I prove my faithfulness. I prove my faithfulness. In the acknowledgement. In the acknowledgement. That this was always yours. That this was always yours. My Lord and my God. My Lord and my God. From today. From today. I thank you. I thank you. That my baskets. That my baskets. Will know what overflow is. Will know what overflow is. I will never lack in my life. I will never lack in my life. I will never know what struggling looks like. I will never know what struggling looks like. Suffering will be a thing of the past. Suffering will be a thing of the past. For what you have placed in my hands. For what you have placed in my hands. Will be unto eternity. Will be unto eternity. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come and give to God, come and give to God. Oh, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, one second. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, shh, sorry. Houston. So there's about 200 more tickets left. And it's finished. But I saw some other websites also kind of online. I, I bought some to upsell them, but there's still, there's only 200 left. And and, and you know, and on Ticketmaster, when I put them, I put them affordable, like the cheapest they can be, not because we want to make any money. The venue requires it. You know, they require it, and they do their stuff through Ticketmaster. If it was up to me, I don't care about anything. We would just do it. So there's only 200 left on Ticketmaster. And there were originally about 6,000 tickets. Yeah, so there, there are only 200 left. Clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can clap for the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, there's only about 200 left. I say go on the ticket master and get them because those ones are still in the price we tend, intended them to be. Other people took some up, sold them for ridiculous amounts. But in reality, you know, the world doesn't fear God. So they will do anything. But I tell you, no matter what the price is, it's, Jesus is worth it. Amen. What you will receive will surpass all understanding. Amen. So if, you, if the 200s run out in a little bit, don't be discouraged. Look through this other website. There are some people who, uh, Ticketmaster has been going through that thing where people buy tickets of events they know that people want to really go to and they upsell the tickets. There are really few even in those. There's like... There's like almost nothing left. So do your best to go on there and get them. You don't want to miss what God will do in Houston Amen. on the 31st. Amen. It's going to be ridiculously shocking. Amen. The world hasn't seen it. So prepare yourself prayerfully. Get your families, those who are sick, those who need direction. I tell you this, the Lord Jesus will be lifted and glorified. If you believe it, shout amen. Amen. So come give and uh, tell those people who are still waiting for tickets to do it now. Never wait for a Revelation Church event. Amen. People line up, I don't know until where. There's a special grace. 
So you need to jump on it or else you will miss it. So go quickly and do it because God will be glorified. Amen. Now you can give to God. Go for it. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As you come to give, I want to, I want to remind you that you are in your own house. There are a couple of things that we've observed. People are leaving stuff on the chairs as they leave the sanctuary. Some of them are leaving uh, trash and other things. Be mindful that this is our house and we have to keep it proper to God's glory. Amen. We also want to remind you that some people are leaving actually uh, paper and trash in different parts of the bathroom that are choking the, the, the urinals, the toilets. Please be careful not to do that because we've provided these things for your use. Amen? And so let's use it to the glory of God. Praise God. Come on and give as you come. Everybody clap, yo, hey. Your light can drown our darkness and bring our joy to life. We won't submit to sorrow. Our joy is coming in the morning. It's the afternoon, but it's still coming in the morning. Oh, cause your light can drown.
remember we have the lost and found department. If you left anything uh, over here in the past that you need to check to make sure that uh, it's out there. So uh, it's, uh, you get to the lobby and you ask one of the ushers and they'll, they'll show you the place. Amen. God richly bless you. We love you. Thank you so much for fellowshipping with us. And please ensure to invite your friends and family. The Lord keep you. The Lord bless you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. In Jesus' name, amen. Another absolutely phenomenal Sunday service. Sync. I hope that we go back and sync and emerge ourselves into this message. Listen, today was absolutely amazing. Just a quick couple of announcements. We have the platform four, the number four purpose event happening next Saturday from 5 to 7 here at Revelation Church. For couples, it is $125, and for singles, it is $75. You can sign up online at platform, the number four, purpose.co. Make sure you are there. Solo, February 